feels too soon, but anyway. Enough about the weather. Let's stand up. We're going to get church started, all right? We'll start with a few songs, uh, singing and such. Feel free to move around a bit. Not too much. You can stay your feet stationary and just kind of shake your hips a bit. Or you can stand there in total stillness as well. That's fine. But uh, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence here this morning, God. We love you and we're thankful for you and who you are and what you're doing. We pray that we could uh, experience you this morning, God. Amen. Lord, you are. 
Amen. Let's say our memory verse together, all right? It's Psalm 107, verses 8 to 9. We'll all, we'll all say it together here. You ready? Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Who you are, it's who you are. 
Yeah, Father, we, uh, we make choices and specific choices to trust you this morning, God. Trusting in your goodness. Everything that that entails, God. We love you and we trust you. Give us grace to trust you more. In your name, amen. Well, again, welcome to the church. Uh, turn to somebody and say, apple orchards. And then go ahead and grab a seat. And free donuts. Don't say that unless it's real, Sean. <laughs> Good morning and welcome. My name is Anna Hilliker, and I'm on the pastoral team here at the Vineyard. And I'm so excited to welcome you all to church this morning. All of your jubilant and enthusiastic voices are so great to hear. Real quick, we just want to take a minute to invite our junior high and high school age students to join our youth ministry team in the youth room. That's out the left hand, the left hand side of the sanctuary. And while our students make their way to the youth group, if you are new here this morning, here are a few things that might be particularly helpful for you to know. First of all, if you're new today, you may have noticed that there are three cards in the seat in front of you, in the pocket there. The first is our welcome card. And if you're new to our church, we would love to have you include all the requested information on the card, just so that we can get to know you better and welcome you more warmly and more fully. Completed welcome cards can be dropped in the offering bag at the end of the service or taken to the welcome table near the entrance and you get a Starbucks gift card from our lovely person at the welcome table. Along with the welcome card, you will notice cards for the next steps, the green card, and for prayer, which is the blue one. The green card provides information on how you can connect more meaningfully at the vineyard and offers ways for you to go deeper with your faith. While our blue prayer card invites you to make prayer requests or to offer thanks to God for the good things in your life. Any or all of these cards can be placed in the offering bags as they are passed around following the sermon. Now we're going to take a moment to highlight a few of our upcoming events. And more details on these are available in our bulletin, which you should have received as you came in this morning. So please make sure to check there for any more information. You love planning, and you are not at all like me, and you want to mark all the future community life events for the rest of 2017 on your calendar so you don't miss one? Then be sure to grab one of our new community life events brochures, which is in the front of the lobby of the church. And that way you won't miss anything, and you'll be so planned and organized, it will be great. And I will have to learn from you. <laughs> we are also hosting this coming Friday, September 8th at 7 p.m., a Vineyard's Got Talent show in our own backyard. It, you should go, it's gonna be really awesome. We have a ton of talented and entertaining people in our community, so you should come and be involved. Beginning in September, which is now, can you believe it? We will be offering a nine week class that can help you take control of your finances for the purposes of escaping debt, building your financial savings, and giving more generously. The nine week financial peace class will run on Saturday mornings. Additional information and sign up instructions can be found in your bulletin. It's that time of year again, the weather's changing a little bit, and this coming Sunday the 17th, so that's two weeks, I think, our fall homemade chili cook-off is back. So if you, you know, boast a mean chili, if you have some hidden talents in the kitchen that you haven't shared with us, we are inviting you to bring your best to the table. The cook-off tasting will be held after the 1030 service, and prizes will be awarded. Sign up in the lobby today or see Nigel Berry for more information. We have a knockout event for you coming up on Sunday, September 10th. It's a combined parents meeting and knockerball event here at the church for our youth and youth parents. Stick around after the service to connect with Sam, our awesome youth pastor, and other ministry leaders over a pizza. And then this is where it gets great. You're going to head across the street and battle out in a mix of games while donning, as Nigel says, inflatable body armor is his description of this. Basically, you wear these giant inflatable bubbles and run into each other. Who wouldn't love that? That sounds like fun and a lot of stress relief, actually. Um, RSVP at the green events table in the lobby and grab a permission slip, slip for any of your teenage participants. If you're thinking of plugging in deeper with our local church here at the Vineyard, we're going to be launching the Belong class on Sunday, October the 9th. Belong, which can serve also as our membership class, is a six-week series that plots our church onto the Christian landscape, explores our mission and values, and explores our model for transformation. You can sign up today at the green table in the lobby, and childcare will be provided if you need it. 
Finally, we serve a God that knows us by name, and we desire to be a community where we know the names of one another. Towards that end, name tags are available in the front of each section of chairs. So if you're seated in the front of a section, there should be an envelope under your seat, and we invite you to kindly select a name tag from the envelope and pass the rest back. This way we can greet your smiling face by name. We have a couple of recommended spaces for vocal children during the celebration. We offer a cry room over here on my right, your left, which is exclusively for moms with kids, and the gallery near the entrance is avail available for both moms and dads. The audio is broadcast in both locations, so you can remain connected to the worship and the sermon. Please remember also to turn your phones to silent, as, and also this is a great opportunity to pick up sermon notes, a Bible, and or coloring pages from the cart at the back and the center of the room. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to our senior pastor, Don Wage. Well, good morning, church. How are you all in this space this morning? Already this morning, a door has broken. So my morning has been going really great. I was the one that opened it, and it just like came off of its hinges. But it's a really big glass door, so I needed help. And um, there's a song where it's like, you know, I called to the Lord, and he rescued me. And this morning, I was singing, I called to Nigel, and he rescued me. And then Stephen, uh, Katrina's husband, uh, Katrina Fox is our celebration manager. Her husband came and helped as well, and we got the door put back together. So hopefully your morning is a little less eventful than my morning has been. Hey, I am so glad that you're here with us this morning. Um, we are grateful for you and the gifts of God that you bring with you into this space. And as we gather together as a church, we do so in the active presence of God through our worship, community, and our engagement with scripture, which we hope will lead to transformational growth in our everyday lives. As a congregation, we want to experience belonging, we want to cultivate tangible joy, we want to activate hope, and we want to know comfort as we learn to trust, trust Jesus more and more every day, which we hope will enable us to reflect the welcome and peace of Jesus to those who are closest and dearest to us as friends neighbors and community. We pray that whether this is your first time with us or you've been connecting with us for many, many weeks, uh, that you would begin to feel the invitation of the Holy Spirit to join us in this vision. Amen? When nothing seems to be going our way, right? It's as if my morning was ready for my sermon. When nothing seems to be going our way, when we feel like we're being assailed on every side, when we're overwhelmed, when worry has wrecked our lives, disrupted our sleep, robbed us of our peace, when all we have to sustain ourselves is fear mixed with anxiety, it can be easy to lose sight of the Lord. It can be difficult to figure out what to do in these kinds of situations. So what do we do? Well, we take matters into our own hands. And our own internal emotional responses well, they can include things such as fear and anger and lust and lying and scheming that we can do. But these responses aren't enough to sustain us when what we need is hope. And what does hope do? Well, hope allows us to remain open. Openness gives way to surprise, and surprise unleashes our gratitude. Gratitude, as I've said throughout this sermon series, is the recognition of a God-given gift. It's the development of thankfulness in our every day. We know that we are grateful when we are able to live lives without taking things for granted. The practice of gratitude allows us to keep our hearts open regardless of whatever comes our way. And then there's a bonus. Here's the bonus. As we practice gratitude, we are transformed into joyful people. As we integrate and practice and embody gratitude. Now, I really want to do something uh, as a pastor of our community. I want to lay waste to the idea that joy and hardship are mutually exclusive. Jesus promises us 
you look over in John chapter 16, verse 33, you'll read, Jesus promises us, he promises us that we will have trouble in this life. And at the same time, he encourages us because he tells us that he will be present with us on the journey. John 16, 33 I have told you these things, talking to his disciples about what was coming, so that in me you may have peace. Because in this world, he says, you will have trouble. But take heart. I, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Jesus invites us into a way of being that allows us to both recognize the realities of life and to remain hopeful for the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. Because hope is what we need most when life is most chaotic. This is why I've been encouraging us throughout this sermon series to keep a gratitude journal. We have to train ourselves to look for the ways that God is at work. And hope invites us to hunt for the ways that God is already providing for us. This is our active response. It's one of the ways that we resist the empire. It's one of the ways we come alive in situations that are not going our way. The hardship, the pain, the suffering that we experience. Hope itself is an aspect of the very life of God within us, and it's God's desire for us and his creation to be unleashed and to unfold in our midst. Listen to what Isaiah 43, 19 says. See, I'm doing new things. Now it springs up. And this part I love because it asks the question, do you not perceive it? Remember last week I talked about the fact that we often only see what we're looking for? Have we oriented ourselves in such a way that we are looking for the ways in which God is involved and in participating in our everyday life? Here in Isaiah, he says, it's springing up all around you. Do you not perceive it? It goes on. I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands or deserts. Then in Revelation 21, verse 5, God says, and John records, I'm making all things new. And then the Lord says to John, write this down, because this is a trustworthy and important thing for people to see and understand. But it can be hard being trapped in our situations for us to actually be able to see that God is at work all around us unless we train ourselves, unless we resist the way the empire has instructed us to live, that we might see how God is already at work providing for us. But when things are conspiring against us, when we are experiencing trouble uh, on every side, the trouble that Jesus promised us, it can be difficult, if not downright impossible, for us to cling to hope, especially when despair seems like a much friendlier companion. This is why I appreciate that something that Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. If you have a Bible or a Bible app, you can fire it up, open it. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse uh, 7. I'll read starting in verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. For those who seek, find. And to those who knock, the door will be opened. Which of you, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you, then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? That's a, a very powerful section of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus speaks right to us in the midst of our reluctance, right in the midst of our fear, our disappointment, and he invites us to have hope by taking up the task of asking. 
Jesus invites us to ask not so much for, so that we sort of get the answer that we desire or want, but so that we can do something much more important so that we might shift our posture from despair to hope. He's inviting us to challenge fear, to challenge despair, to challenge the sense that we have been abandoned. Jesus says, you challenge all of this by taking up this posture of asking. Now, to be honest with you, not that I haven't been honest with you up until this point, but more disclosure than I haven't said so far. Jesus goes way beyond my expectations here in Matthew chapter 7. Because what he does is he says, anyone who asks will receive. Those who seek will find. Those who knock, the door, Jesus says, will be open. Now, that's beyond my expectation because he seems to be promising something to all of us. Now, I think there's a danger for us to read this and to make it into something that we want, what I like to call our own wish fulfillment. It's this idea that we make God into a genie. I tried to talk about this last week, right? You put a prayer in, you get a blessing out. You put a prayer in, you get a spouse out. You put a prayer in, you get a car out. You put a prayer in, you get a degree out, right? You don't have to go to class. You don't have to study. You put a prayer in, you get your research paper published. You don't actually have to do the work. You just put the, that's not how it works, all right? Is everyone with me? If we begin to think of God in that way, we we sort of deceive ourselves. You know, I just ask for whatever I want. And, and God, you're going to do it for me. Now, let me just, let me lay waste to this, because since I realized that I was going to be short, I have been praying without ceasing that I would grow taller. And if you can look, if you have eyes to see this morning, you'll see I am still not my desired height. And it hasn't been because I didn't ask. And I asked in different ways. I would go on prayer walks. I asked in the company of believers. I would gather two or three together and say, would you pray with me that this might happen? I would ask for anointing. I would anoint others as I asked. I would fast. I would search the scriptures to try to understand what God's will for my height was. Yet here I am. So clearly, this isn't about wish fulfillment or else my wishes would have been fulfilled. It's about our posture. Are we in a posture where we're leaning in to God? Leaning in to God's future? Are we leaning in to God's existence, God's power, God's love, God's grace, God's desire, and God's ability to connect with us? Or are we leaning back, assuming that it all depends on us? Now, because I really wanted to be taller, I I did some research about how people grew past the time that they were allotted to grow. And one person prayed, and God actually grew them two more inches. And I was like, why them and not me, Lord? And then the other person broke their legs in two places and put pins in. And I was like, eh, I'm not that committed to getting taller. Anticipating our reluctance to actually take Jesus at his word, he offers this to us in verse 9. Which of you, if your son or daughter asks for bread, will give them a stone? Or which of you, if your child asks for a fish, you would give them a snake instead? If you, Jesus says, then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more were your father in heaven Give good gifts to those who ask him. Now, we all have reasons here for why we don't endeavor to come towards Jesus in this way. Maybe it's our fear and reluctance of asking. Maybe you've experienced an entire life of broken promises. People promising things but not following through. Maybe you've had an experience of life where you've had a series of painful relationships where people have disappointed you. Maybe you've been abandoned and you've had to chart your own course. You've seemingly, as it were, all on your own. And so all of this has worked. It's really conspired against 
your ability to sort of trust what Jesus is saying here. I think we all have some level of reservation when it comes to trusting others and even, as we think about it, trusting God. Now, this brokenness in our lives may be the result of disappointment, years of disappointment, asking and never receiving. It may be born out of our experiences in communities where we have watched and experienced person after person leave or fail or disappoint us. It may be born out of our pride or out of our willingness to go on it alone. But I think there's hope and what Jesus offers us here in Matthew chapter 7, in this commandment to ask. When you look at the original Greek, uh, the, the verb tense of the words, ask, seek, and knock, they're actually in the present tense imperative, so they actually could be restated as, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. It's all about not giving up and certainly not giving in. It's about thrusting, casting, flinging our hope and faith on a God who is near to us, who's able to hear us, and who has promised to be with us. Hope keeps us open. Openness gives way to surprise, and surprise unleashes gratitude. Let me, um, let me break down hope, because hope is a really hard concept sometimes for a lot of us. A lot of us, we operate in hope even though we don't even realize it, right? We stay in that job hoping we can get a promotion or a raise. We stay in that relationship uh, hoping that that person will actually finally see us and love us the way that we want them to. We, we use hope in lots of ways that can be hidden to us, but hope is coming to terms with a reality that in this life, we've been given everything that we need to come to the fullness of life, to come alive in God's presence, both in this present reality and in the age to come. The more we activate hope, the more we come to appreciate the life that we have now and the more confidence we build for the future. Hope, then, is the response of the believer, of the person who's trusting God to struggle, which takes us from this place of inner stagnation, emotional despair, to a life that is worth living. Remember that hope is the antidote to despair. Every time we enthrone hope, we enter into a transformed life. Hope is not the denial of a present reality or hardship or pain. It's not some placebo to make us feel better. Hope is real. It's tangible. Hope is a series of small but important actions and steps that we take to transform the darkness of despair into the bright light of life. Let me make this point uh, by using a parable, one of my favorite parables. I really do love the Gospels, and I love the person of Jesus, and he tells these really fantastic stories like this one in Luke chapter 18, which I want to share with you this morning. And I love it because of how it's actually uh, phrased. In this case, you know, last week I was somewhat frustrated with how Luke opened up the parable. This week I'm okay with it, all right? So, you know, from week to week, my opinions change on Luke. Luke writes, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. Verse 2, he said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. Verse 4, for some time he refused, but Finally, he said to himself, even though I do not fear God, nor do I care about what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, that's what it says, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. There's a scripture that says, the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent taketh it by force. Isn't that interesting? That here in this passage, the judge is fearing the attack of the widow and her pestering of him. And the Lord said, Luke writes, 
Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice quickly. I love the fact that this passage, this parable, is in the scripture. I love the fact that in some ways Jesus tells us um, that the kingdom of God is like this parable. That there's this persistent widow coming to this judge, and because she is pestering, bothering, coming over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, the judge responds. And I want to be very careful because there are a lot of us who suffer from habitual um, ailments or diseases that um, we, have, we have no cure for. And there can be some sense of just saying, gosh, how do I, in the midst of this hardship that I'm experiencing, and I've, I've begun to understand, just a little bit, a little tiny bit of understanding, certainly not as much as some of you who are in constant pain all the time, because my eczema comes back and I can't control it, and it is painful. Last week when I was unleashing all of the things that went wrong in my week, I left out that my eczema had come back and was flaring up again. And so in the midst of everything else that went wrong, my body turned on. And it can be difficult to be in a place where you have been asking God. You have been asking God. And you have been asking God. And what I want to say to you this morning is, have you asked God for help? I don't want us to ever give up. Being in a posture of asking God for God to bring us. Waiting for God is difficult business because it requires a willingness to lean into God's existence, God's power, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's desire for connection with us. And this is why we need real hope. Because hope says God's world is in God's hands. Echoing what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 24, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. You are beloved by God, held in the hand of God. And Jesus says that no one can snatch you out of God's hand. Are you living in that reality today? In spite of what might be going on and might not be going the way that you want it to go. Are you in inhabiting a reality where you are in the safe embrace of a loving father who knows your name. Walking with Jesus is learning to feed hope that comes out of despair. This hope doesn't live outside of us. It lies within us and it lies within the spiritual life that we cultivate in partnership with God. This is our invitation, friends, to wake up to gratitude, which is by putting ourselves in a posture of hope, leaning into God's future. May we find ourselves persistently asking, seeking, and knocking so that we may remain open, just like that widow. Can you imagine that widow? Can you imagine the surprise on the day that the judge decided to adjudicate on her behalf? The only way that she got the surprise was by being what? She had to be open. She had to be open to the possibility that today would be the day. Friends, I want you to live in the overflow. I want you to live in the overflow. Because if you live in the overflow, your lives will overflow joy and hope and peace and friendship and compassion and love and space for those who are near. So here's what I want to do. I want to create some space for us this morning uh, to try this, this whole task of asking. And I want to invite um, a couple ways for you uh, to do this. One way you can do it is you can just silently do it in your space, in your chair, just you talking to God. We have a little card that's in front of you. It's a prayer card. You can note what you're grateful for at the top and then put what you've been asking God for on the bottom under the prayer request, and on Wednesday, the staff will join our prayers to yours and pray for whatever you put there. 
And then the other um, opportunity is for some of us, we haven't yet given our per- ourselves permission to ask God for the thing that we want. And I just want to create some space for us to just sit together in the company of believers, in the presence of our God, and just open our hands, consenting to God's and allowing just the, just the flow of the Holy Spirit to come on us and to, to speak to us, to just give us permission. There's a way in which we, we sort of take away permission to even ask God for the thing that's in our heart, as if we can hide it from God in the first place. You know, you laugh at me. You go, uh, but you know what I'm talking about. It's that thing you won't give voice to because maybe you've been socialized or trained into thinking that you can't ask God for whatever it is that you want to ask God. And all I want to do is just create some space. So let's just take two minutes in the presence of God, um, and you can use the card to write out the prayer request. You could sit in the silence, or you can just sit with your hands just open uh, as a way of consenting to God's presence here with us, and then Uh, Just invite the Holy Spirit to give you permission, permission to ask for that thing that you haven't asked. I was writing down the thing I hadn't vocalized. The feeling that I was have having was I don't want to vocalize it because once I ask for it, it's out there. And if it doesn't happen, then I'm going to be disappointed. And I think that's some of us in the room. I think, I think that's the reluctance that we have. You want to go to grad school. Um, you want to change your career. You want to try something that's new. The reluctance that we have is that it's the fear of the disappointment. That you just you just don't want to be disappointed if, if it doesn't happen. And I think we're in a Holy Spirit. And I don't want to do anything that feels artificial to say, oh yeah, God's going to give you everything that you need. That is necessarily how it works. But here's the thing that I do believe, is that I believe that there is freedom and permission and space for us to lean in to lean into God with that disappointment, that fear of the disappointment, and say, this is why I don't want to ask, because if I ask and you don't give it to me or it doesn't happen, then what then? And I think what I just want to do is just ask you to just trust yourself in the presence of God. I know that it, it's hard. I mean, I've, I'm experiencing the emotion 
of it right now, so I'm not, I'm not saying this in a way that's detached from you. I'm sitting in this space with you, or at least I think that. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would give us confidence, that you would give us freedom, that you would unleash peace, that you would unleash a sense of your loving presence with us, that we can trust ourselves to your love and care. That we can trust ourselves that you truly do know us, that you truly do see us, that you know what this thing is already, and that you're not making any promises to us to do a wish fulfillment, but you are promising to be present with us as we make our requests known to you. Holy Spirit, would you come in power? Would you calm our hearts, and would you settle our minds in your presence? Release your peace on us. I have two practical tips. One is um, continue to keep a gratitude journal. Uh, Craig, can you put your hand up for a second here? Yep, Craig. Yeah, that Craig. All right, right behind Craig is the Bible cart. On the Bible cart are some journals. So if you don't have a journal and you'd like to grab one, you can. Um, just so that you might begin the practice of disciplining yourself into writing down the ways that God is providing and caring for you. And then uh, the other practical tip uh, is very simple, but is very difficult at the same time, which is look for the ways that God is already providing for you. Because we only see what we're looking for. If you're here this morning and you're in pain of any kind, emotional, spiritual, or physical, we'd love to pray for you in our prayer station. If the thing that you might have noted in the presence of God on the prayer card or in your heart is something you'd like someone to partner with you on in prayer, we have a prayer station over here to my left, and we have folks who are trained and would love to partner with you. Amen? All right, so uh, I'm going to have a few ways to respond right now and reflect on what we just heard. Um, if you're still in that moment that Pastor Donnell is describing, you could even feel free to close your eyes or open your hands and just present yourself to God. Um, but yeah, let's just listen for just, just a few seconds, 10 or 20 seconds, and see what God might be speaking to us right now in this moment. Father, that you would keep speaking in ways that we can hear. We want to hear your voice and respond. Now is the time, too, that we're going to take our offering in just a few moments. But first, uh, a welcome card and a prayer card in the seat backs in front of you. If you're new here, we'd love to get to know you. Please do fill out that welcome card. And if you need prayer, or if you've already filled out your prayer card, you can drop those in the offering bag as they go by, and you can continue to fill those out as I'm talking right now. You might also respond by going to our prayer station and praying with someone from our prayer ministry team trained and vetted in and gentle and praying with them is a great way to experience more of God's gentle presence. We're going to take our offering now too. It's one way to show our gratitude to God for what he's done for us. We can contribute financially to providing this safe place for us, our children, the broader community to encounter Jesus. All the gifts given here uh, help us support those in need as well as support and coordinate efforts to bring Jesus and his mercy 
for those who are inside inside of the church. I greatly appreciate it. You can put cash or checks in the offering bags as they go by. If you'd like to use a uh, card, you can use the giving kiosk out in the lobby, or you can go to our website at annarborvineyard.org and click on the Give tab at the top of the homepage. I'll give us just a few more seconds to finish filling out the welcome card or the prayer card. Or to just continue listening to what God might be speaking to you. Let's pray now for our offering. Father, we love you, we adore you, and we trust you the best we can. Please give us grace to trust you more and more. We give these financial gifts now as an act of worship, a way to acknowledge that all we have is yours. Please use these gifts to let the hungry be fed, the lonely be comforted, to bless those that are in need. And may you be greatly trusted and praised as we give. We ask all this in your name, amen. Stay seated as we uh, take our offering and we'll sing the doxology. we come to the table of God this morning, pause and still our hearts, coming into the presence of the giver of gifts. Even the gifts we don't see and that come when we're not expecting them. God, you are always giving us gifts. And like the love, mercy, joy, and hope of Christ, our communion meal is open to all. We serve communion as a cup inside of a cup, the bread of life in the bottom, and the fruit of the vine in the top. We also do have a gluten-free option available if you need it. It will be available on my plate. Be sure to ask for it. Let's all stand as we come. Jesus, we come to this meal gathering up all our fear, our disappointment, our anger, our skepticism and sadness. And we know that you meet us here, even in the midst of difficult emotions and challenging situations. And we pray with boldness, with every fragment of hope and trust that we can muster. Meet us, Holy Spirit. Sustain us. Guide us. Provide for our needs, loving God. In this simple meal, spark hope in our hearts as we continue to seek and as we persevere in waiting. We pray together with the words that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll come to communion in two lines then.
We love you, Jesus, is in the same way that your love is overflowing and overflowing in us. We want our love to overflow for you right now. We receive our love right now. We love you. We pour out ourselves to you as you pour out yourself to us. One more. Good. 
Romans 12, 1 through 2. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God, and you'll be changed from the inside out. Amen. Amen. Have a good week.